Up next, a matchup for the UFC heavyweight division title. Well, DC, you may want to retire before this guy becomes the number one heavyweight contender. Francis Ngannou, the power threat, born in Cameroon, raised in France, and he's carved out quite a nice niche here thus far in the UFC. Yes, he has. He's a very scary fighter. The knockout reel of Francis Ngannou is crazy, and the names now are starting to pile up. When you can knock out Alistair over in Curtis Blades and Cain Velasquez, people will take notice. It's just this confidence and this calmness about Francis that makes him even scarier than all of his physical attributes is his ability to really stand in there and know that it only takes one shot and he could be wearing the UFC championship. And UFC 218 was so good that that knockout of Alistair Overeem did not even earn Francis Ngannou the bonus. Wow, that's insane. That's shoot, not true. Don't shoot the message. I will shoot the message. Don't shoot Ngannou, he'll come right through. <laughs> All right, so here he is making his way to the Octagon for another heavyweight title defense. This has been the baddest man on the planet now for several years, and he has taken on all comers more often than not, leaving them twitching on the canvas, knockout power for days. The question is tonight, with a challenge like this, can he walk out the way he came in as the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world? for this heavyweight championship fight. Four years, the difference in age between these two fighters with similar height and reach. And now for the particulars, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, it's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 17 wins, three losses. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 250 pounds. Fighting out of Paris, France, presenting the challenger, Francis the Predator. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of five wins, three losses. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. Fighting out of Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world. All right, this is for the UFC Championship. I want you to be my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. I want a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, so back to your corners, and fight. between the strong striker and the decorated grappler. Any chance that these guys mix it up or are you just expecting they're gonna stick to what got them to the dates? I'm expecting a pretty straightforward approach from both of these fighters. The striker will try to lead with his punches and his kicks, 
and the grappler will try to time a takedown, time a clinch position so he can start to work towards a lot of those great judo throws that he possesses. Once on the ground, he is in his realm and will start to chase submissions. Single collar tie now. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? And Ganu gets caught with that punch. Oh, nice slip to avoid that right hand. Oh, huge left hand from Francis Ngannou. Every time he loads up and extends, you feel like the fight might be in? Yeah, absolutely. And the whole crowd holds their breath. Right. right? You hear a big exhale. Every time Francis loads up to go finish a fight, you hear the crowd take all the air in yeah. because they're ready to explode. That's the type of performer, that's the type of fighter that Francis is. Ngannou gets caught with that punch. We cross the midpoint in round one. Shooting for the takedown here. Well, that left hand has been there at times, not on that attack. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Clipped him with the right hand there. Nice sprawl there as he stuffs another takedown. So that was a big priority coming in, and the takedown defense has absolutely held up to him. Yeah, he's done a fantastic job of understanding the threat of... Oh! Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. He got him. Trying to stay in this fight! So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Francis Ngannou. Stuff to take down, no problem. And there comes the separation now. Nice punch lands over the top. Look at those weapons. Look at how he uses his knees to the body. And potentially a critical takedown here. Down into his mouth. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the ground and pound starts. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head, like, through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. All right, so let us now check out some of the action in that round, DC. There was a whole lot of it, including a stunner upstairs that nearly closed the show. It was a lot of action. It was back and forth action, but the big moment was that big strike to the head that landed, that put him on wobbly legs, and in survival mode, luckily he made it to the end of that round. All right, round two. And he landed the right hand there. Down defense there as he blocks the shot. Oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got a pressure. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Holding on to him here, not really doing too much. Perhaps just looking to recover. Notice the drive. Look at how they drive the knee right into the midsection. Takedown defense holds up. Just misses with a left hook there. All right, some really grueling work here in the clinch. Both what a fantastic wrestler. Great takedown. Oh, big combination of ground and pound strikes here, DC. This could be the beginning of the end. I mean, you gotta be very careful when you take these big ground and pound strikes. You need a controlled posture on the bottom. And if you're the top guy, the guy that's looking to finish, Continue to gain posture and rain down big strikes in your opponent. I mean, how many can he take? Man, 
how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter, and he's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. The ground and pound has been there all night. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. I need you to scramble. 90 seconds now to go in the round. And now he has a headlock trying to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look from the transition to an arm triangle to try to chase the finish. Watch triangle, watch triangle. He needs to push the arm to the side. Get his head against the mat. Now watch as he goes to the finish. Watch his chest. Go. And he's out. Both fighters back to their feet now. Man, as he landed a high volume of strikes here in round two, definitely picking up the pace after round one. So he got the message from the corner, and now he is taking control of this second round. Again, he's looking for that left. It's not there. Oh! Oh! Oh, continuing to attack the How about those five minutes? And there's the end of the round, and the tide has officially turned a huge head strike to stun his opponent. We'll see which corner can adjust here moving forward. I mean, they've got to be celebrating. They've got to be happy. Everything's working. But the other side has to be concerned. They have to figure something out, make some sort of adjustment to try to change the tide of this fight. Championship fight. Connects with a right hand. Pretty good punch that one. Nice right punch by this young man. Well, he what a takedown. Clustering up now. And now the damage is about to start. In Gano's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. Go. All right, a good ground and pound by him here, certainly staying busy, and not just busy, but effective. You can just throw punches to keep the referee off of you. This guy is throwing punches to be effective, to throw damaging strikes. He's doing a fantastic job. These are some serious punches from the top here. He's continuing to maintain good posture and making these strikes count. He's doing a really good job of watching Pretty Upkin making his punches count while not putting himself in danger. Good solid strike on the ground. Volume strikes continue to rain down. His opponent pretty helpless there on the ground. His opponent is helpless. He's been hurt, he's been battered, he's been beat. And now this guy's just trying to find the right time to land the strike that is the fight. Get on that side, get on the side. Don't let him kick the flat. You gotta move, don't be flat. Lands with the ground and pound. All right, so not enough action there on the ground. The referee brings the fight back to the feet. And we are back underway. Let's go, let's go, finish this, guys. Come on. All right hook attempt, no good. All right, you're okay, you're okay. Let's focus, let's focus now. Just a slip there. That knee might have landed there. Oh, nice job to defend the takedown and scramble to his feet. Strong defense here as the hook to the head is blocked. Just missed with the left there. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. No! Oh, huge right hand! Whoa! Now goes in and secures the takedown. Grab the 
Well, any time you are in a ground-fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Ground and pound strike there now. All right, that's three rounds in the books. We are headed to the championship round. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene. Shot is blocked. Oh, he just, oh, he just heard him. He just heard him. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Oh, he lands another strike to the body here. Really starting to connect on a lot of strikes to the midsection here in the latter stages of this fight. Big call punch land. Now he gets back to range. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. He's back in the clinch position. This is where he has done a ton of good work here. Punch, punch, punch to the head from the clinch. And Ghanu's got the tie clinch now. Tries to mix in a takedown here. Nice defense there, huge block. Whiffs on the straight right hand. Well, this is exactly the sense of urgency you're looking for. Try to take the judges out of it. He is lighting them up now. and lock up the sun. You gotta try to find whether or not you're gonna land ground and pound here or if you're gonna go to submission. Oh, right to the mount. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Under two minutes to go in the round. Lands the ground and pound strike. I mean, how many can he take? Useful strike there, the ground and pound on point tonight. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage off. 60 seconds now to go in the fight. Oh, that'll work. The ground and pound strike is good. Seconds to go. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. All right, he's got the full mount now. Is this one of the most dominant positions in MMA? Is that fair to say? It's a very dominant position. It's one of the most ideal positions you can get to, especially if you are fighting someone that doesn't truly understand that they're not in as much danger as they are. Because it's dangerous, but there are a lot of outs. And if a person isn't very understanding of that, then you can really, really put some damage on them. All right, let's check out some of the action DC. And how about the punching acumen by that fighter in that previous round? He does not waste anything. He does not loop punches. Everything's tight. Everything's precise. He's a sniper. We always talk about how he's a sniper. He is a sniper. Right, and it showed in that exchange that allowed him to drop his opponent. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish his fight. Look at how fast. The only person I can do this to is maybe John. John knows it is. The weight difference, I don't know if you know what you did so much. You missed a lot of your classes. If I'm gonna do this to anybody, it's Eddie. Oh, 
Well, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. where you don't want to be, though. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pad. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Oh, some big punches raining down here. Picking the spots well and hasn't chosen to engage his opponent on the ground necessarily, posturing up and, and making these shots count. I mean, why would he when he's having so much success doing it in fighting in this exact same manner that's leading him to be ahead in the fight right now? Lands with the ground and pound here. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. I mean, how many can he take? Ground and pound strike is true. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? I mean, he's cutting out the sides with these beautiful leg kicks. Both fighters throwing heat now. One minute to go in the fight. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Got the single collar tie. Another beautiful takedown. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Now he's attacking the triangle. Triangle looks pretty tight, DC. I'm no Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, but maybe not good here. No, it looks like it's getting in deep. A triangle, a triangle. All right, so there's the final horn, and what a performance by underdog challenger tonight. He had it all going on the feet, and in all likelihood, we've got a new champion atop this division. If you're gonna take a belt from a UFC champion, your game has to be on point. This young man came prepared mentally, he came prepared physically, and it feels like he used his striking to get the job done. Official decision is in. It resides with Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score the contest. 49-46. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision. And new undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Francis the Predator. All right, so we got a new UFC heavyweight champion and potentially a star is born tonight, DC. He is the type of guy that makes people want to tune in. He is the type of guy that you know excitement will happen when you 